All right, Wilson, I got it all together here, so let's get rolling. 633, downtown Billings, a frosty morning, 29 up at the airport, a lot colder out in some of the other outlying areas as we look at first news. It's fair, it's accurate, you get the damn truth. Israeli army has issued an evacuation warning for residents of the entire Lebanese city of Baalbek, along with some of the surrounding areas. The area marked for evacuation includes some ancient heritage sites. 2,800 people have been killed recently in their attacks to wipe out Hezbollah and Hamas terrorists. Hezbollah is firing more rockets along with Hamas into Israel Israel's picking up the pace now. They have vowed to make sure that these terrorist groups don't thrive again. American voters are concerned that the ongoing situation in the Middle East will escalate into a broader conflict. Half of them are worried about the possibility of a wider war. So why would you continue to vote for the people that got us there? It amazes me. But that's the poll. They're concerned the United States are going to be drawn into this war in the Middle East, not to mention the Ukraine that is getting such positive support from the Harris-Biden administration and their efforts to fight Russia. Spanish authorities said 52 people died. They had some major flash flooding there in Barcelona yesterday, disrupted their rail lines, highways. 51 died Wednesday, another last night. They expect the death toll from that flooding to go higher. Joe Biden yesterday made a rare appearance in front of a microphone and this is why they keep them away. He said the only garbage that he sees floating around this world are Donald Trump supporters. Oh yeah, he said that. You may recall the basket of deplorables that Hillary Clinton called everyone who wouldn't vote for her in the last election. Joe Biden's White House is in recovery mode now. White House spokesman said he's referring to hateful rhetoric from the Madison Square Garden rally as garbage. No, that's not what he said. He said the only garbage I see floating out there are Trump supporters. That's what he said. U.S. presidential election will be significant for the Kremlin. Kamala Harris likely to continue the massive war and military support for the Ukraine against Russia. Donald Trump said that he has a good rapport with the Russian leader and he could bring a quick end to the war. So we'll see how you people vote. Continuing war in the Middle East and Russia? Or do you want things solved and things tempered down? We'll see. It's up to you. In the meantime, Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched a massive exercise in their country's nuclear forces now, featuring a retaliatory strike. He spoke yesterday with his military leaders, said the drills would simulate action in using nuclear weapons, folks. This is where we're at. This is where this current administration has got you. Do you want more? You want more tension? You want it escalating? Keep putting them in. Second High Court has ruled that the Japanese government's policy against same-sex marriage is unconstitutional. The ruling, the latest in a series of decisions upholding plaintiffs' demands for marriage equality in Japan. The Tokyo High Court called the ongoing ban a groundless legal discrimination based on sexual orientation. The quirky comedy actor who rose from a background dancer in Elvis Presley movies to co-star in some favorite movies like Tootsie, Young Frankenstein, Terry Gard died. She was 79, died Tuesday, multiple sclerosis, followed by her families and friends, established her as a talented comedy when she was in the Young Frankenstein movies. There is a 15-year-old Colorado girl that is now in hospital with severe complications because of the E. coli food poisoning outbreak in McDonald's. Camberlin Baller, Grand Junction. She ate quarter-pounder hamburgers three times that week when the outbreak was detected and she was infected with that E. coli strain. It can cause severe kidney damage. She's experiencing some kidney failure. She's among the 75 that were sickened. One person has died from it. Camberlin's mother has now moved to sue the fast food giant over that illness. 13 people were reported apparently have got sick in Montana from that E. coli outbreak. A Chinese spaceship carrying a three-person crew has docked with their orbiting space station 
as they are expanding their exploration into outer space. Two men and one woman will replace the astronauts who have lived on the Tiangong space station for six months. They are expected to stay there, the new crew, till April or May. The new mission commander went into space in the Shenzhou 14 mission back in 2022. But uh, China quickly expanding their space station and their apparatus above our heads. Rising stocks yesterday sent NASDAQ comp, uh, composite to a record. Training was mixed, though, on the other stock exchanges, Wall Street, S&P 500. Meta platforms, Microsoft, others, big influential big tech stocks helped NASDAQ's gains yesterday. They helped offset some of the others. For instance, Ford, they were down 8.4%. Automakers said high warranty expenses and the cost of electric vehicles and other things holding their profits down. JetBlue Airways, they lost 17% of their value yesterday. Latest quarter said the results were better than they expected, but the revenue was still down from where it was last year. S&P was up nine points. The Dow fell 154. NASDAQ rose 145. Oil was also up a little bit yesterday. The federal appeals court said the National Labor Relations Board was wrong to order Tesla's CEO Elon Musk to delete a social media post about union leaders. 98 ruling supports Musk and his freedom to do so. U.S. job openings tumbled last month. Lowest level we've seen. Sign that the labor market is tightening. There were 7.4 million jobs open in September. That was down from the 7.9 million jobs that were open in August. The number of Americans who quit their jobs, 3.1 million last August. August. Can you imagine this, folks? I would have never thought U.S. bankruptcy judge approved the sale of Tupperware. Paves the way for the food shortage company, storage company, to exit from Chapter 11 protection. Everybody had Tupperware in their homes Mm -hmm. and used a lot of it. Tupperware parties, Tupperware everything. But they filed for Chapter 11. Transaction received the court green light Tuesday subject to some of the closing conditions of the deal. Under the terms of the deal, a group of lenders is actually going to buy the Tupperware brand name and their assets for $23 million. Tupperware announced that it had agreed for the lender takeover. The brand is still expected to operate, only it's going to be called the new Tupperware company. You'll still be able to buy Tupperware products online and through their network of uh, parties and sales across the country, but Tupperware files for Chapter 11. America's Golden Eagles now facing a rising threat. A couple things. Number one, the black market for their feathers used in Native American powwows and ceremonies. The government's response now, a two-pronged crackdown on these rings that are legally trafficking dead eagles and distributing these eagle feathers to tribal members. The program has a years-long backlog. Officials said the illegal killings appear to be worsening now on the Native American tribes and on reservations. An investigation centered around a Montana reservation recently landed its first conviction where a man was accused of killing thousands of birds, 118 bald and golden eagles, and then selling their parts. Add that to now wind turbines and other things that are causing deaths among the eagles. We're seeing their populations once again uh, face some adversity. Federal Railroad Administration has announced $2.4 billion in grants to railroads to help pay for 122 projects nationwide in 41 states. Part of that money is coming from the infrastructure infrastructure bill that they passed. Most of the money will go to track and bridge upgrades around the country. $1.3 billion of the money will go to 81 projects around the country. Montana, one of the recipients of that money to help our improve our railroad and railroad infrastructure. And for the first time since 1938, Children in Des Moines, Iowa, will go trick-or-treating on Halloween, going door-to-door for candy. It's been long commonplace through the country, but not in Des Moines. Iowa's capital city residents took a different approach 70 years ago because they wanted to tamp down on the hooliganism that happened on Halloween. 
Instead, Des Moines children would do it usually the day before Halloween, or they would do it on a Sunday. But this year, they are finally, after 70 years since 1938, going to be allowed to go on Halloween night. The night has limited hours, typically running between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And uh, But Des Moines, Iowa was one of the last holdouts. I remember as a kid, you know, they moved ours to a Sunday because there were a lot of strangulations and killing. Remember the Boston Strangler right, and all that right. stuff? So they had moved it to a Sunday afternoon. But I love that word in the story. That's enough hooliganism. Hooliganism, <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, uh, but now the kids, kids are finally going to be able to do it on Halloween night. Cat Country News Time is 646, Sports of Weather next. In sports last night, Paul and I both went to bed before the end of the game. It just felt like the Mets, or the Yankees rather, were rolling. So they're up 11-4 to right now. Uh, and what was a must-win game, I've got several Facebook friends that are live and die Yankees fans. And they're just going to die if they don't win this series. And uh, you're still down three to one. We still got some more, a little bit longer ways to go here. And uh, two fans got ejected. What? The uh, there was a ball hit, and Mookie Betts went up and put his glove over the wall, caught the ball. Two fans ripped the ball out of his glove, and uh, the league said, "You know what? We uh, we don't do that." So those two were escorted from the stadium in New York. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Did they call him out then? Well, I don't know. Huh? I wouldn't think so because he caught the ball. Oh, yeah. 49 today, folks. That's a little below average, and tomorrow we're going to be at average. 52. And just kind of bounce around here a little bit. Hey, nothing wrong with upper 40s and 50s. No. This time of year, folks, we'll take it. And uh, good working weather out there. 29 at the airport right now. I had 20 at the ranch today, so it, uh, it was a pretty heavy frost out there. 647, that's what's happening. Mark and Paul here together. Getting you up and rolling today. Thanks for tuning into the cat.